Hey everybody, I'm Jason, I'm the 50s kid, and behind me is my 2002 BMW 330i, and today I'm going to show you how to change the brake booster on it without having to disconnect and remove the master cylinder or the DSC hydraulic unit so that you don't have to have any special dealer tools to uh, bleed the brakes properly. So let's get started. Okay. First, I want to replicate the symptoms for you. You can hear the hissing and that scrunching when I push really hard. Or even when I'm pressing slowly, you can hear and you can see that there's excessive pedal travel. Should not be doing that, okay? And uh, I know that this is not the uh, the return the vacuum return valve the vacuum check valve i guess you would call it uh because if that valve was bad then the brake booster wouldn't be working at all and the pedal would be hard as a rock just uh the way it is when the car is when the engine is off uh because no vacuum is being produced and you when you pump the pedal you actually you know pump out your vacuum and your your pedal gets hard as a rock because you're pushing right directly on the master cylinder at that point with no assist from the brake booster but the brake booster is working it's easy to push the pedal but you can hear that the air is escaping from the interior side of the brake booster from from inside the cabin so that means that the seals are going bad on the inside and it's uh, time to change this brake booster before the problem actually gets any worse so first of all I need to make a little bit of room in the engine bay to work basically back here by the brake booster. And the first step of doing that is to remove this air scoop right here. We're gonna remove the uh, air filter housing. We're removing these two 10 millimeter bolts here. And then I'm gonna loosen the clamp on the air snorkel. Disconnect the mass airflow sensor. I like to uh, disconnect these two behind after the mass airflow sensor rather than unclipping these two clips in front of the, mer the uh, mass airflow sensor. And I basically just lift this out as a whole unit. Now we've opened up a uh, little bit of space and <clears throat> uh, Basically, my goal here is to remove uh, this um, heat shield back here. And so, <clears throat> to get that out, really, it can be done without removing any of this stuff right here. And if you want to try that, that's fine. But I think for the purposes of this video, and uh, just to make things easier on myself, I, I just like to make as much room as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the micro filter, the cabin air filter. <clears throat> Unclip this housing here. And there are four number 30 Torx screws. You don't actually have to take them all the way out. Um, after you loosen them, just once you get them loose, they'll pull free from what they're screwed into. They can just kind of stay in the, uh, they can stay in, in the housing there. And I find that they just don't fall out, at least on mine. So I prefer to remove the vacuum hose from the brake booster itself. The, uh, the vacuum escaping there. If you try to remove it from, uh, where it's connected at the intake down here. I found that when I first did this by accident, I actually pulled the uh, what it was connected to, the, the, the check valve that it was connected to straight apart. And it was just kind of a flimsy design. I noticed that BMW had moved to a different sort of, uh, of that same part it, that's all plastic and just kind of molded together. And so uh, when I saw one of those in the junkyard, I just switched to it. But uh, you definitely need to get this hose up out of here and out of the way. Disconnect this from here, the, uh, the wiring loom. Now, 
there are there's one clip here and then there's one clip back here where you actually kind of can't see it but this is basically a half turn and it pulls out a little bit and then another half turn and it comes all the way out and if you can kind of see the, that the way it looks see how it's shaped half turn half turn you just pull it out comes out pretty easily I'll pop the other one out okay now pulls out and there we go rather than buy a brand new booster i'm actually going i actually went to the junkyard today and i picked up a used one for about 40 bucks um yeah you know you it, it it's your call on whether whether you want to use brand new bmw parts or you know just buy one off of ebay i believe you know you can get the original brand ate pumps for about $200 on eBay. I just did not want to spend that much. That had, the, the benefit of doing that was that in taking the booster out in the junkyard, I figured out exactly how to do it. And I figured out whether or not this was actually going to work. And I did that on a car that wasn't mine, that was junk anyway. And I didn't mind bending things and, and possibly breaking them uh, to, to get the part out. But I also learned that I didn't need to break or bend or anything too much in order to uh, get this job done. So, you know, the, the service manual says that you need to actually remove the master cylinder. You need to remove the DSC unit, which is underneath it. I happen to know that you don't need to do that. And there is a way to do this with, without having to crack open any hydraulic lines, which is really a nice thing. So let me show you how to do that. What we're, what we're definitely going to need to do right now is we're going to need to suck out all the brake fluid that we possibly can from the master cylinder. So that is my next step. And I'm using just a turkey baster that I got from the 99 cent store. And you'll notice that this fluid is really, really clean. That is because I completely flushed my, uh, my brake system. That was actually one of the things I, I did before. I, I did this job. You definitely want to remove as much fluid as you can because you do not want to get brake fluid on your car. Brake fluid eats through paint very quickly and uh, it's pretty nasty stuff. So wear gloves. I'm actually going to leave the cap on and I'm going to leave the, the master cylinder of the reservoir connected to the, to the master cylinder. I'm not going to take that off because I won't have to plug those lines after I remove it and uh, I'll avoid spilling brake fluid all over everything. I'm just going to remove the uh, these two 13 millimeter bolts I believe. Freaking gear wrench. I do love these but sometimes Like more difficult than it needs to be. All right. Well, I dropped the bolt, but that's okay. I'll use my magnet to get it out later. And it's a little more difficult to remove these bolts with the the reservoir on, but uh, I think it's worth going through a little trouble now. Save myself a lot of headache and cleaning up spilled brake fluid. I'm gonna let that one drop too, because I'll be able to get it a little bit later. So I went ahead and I removed the fastener from that stud and that stud there. They're both 13 millimeters. And I'm gonna pull the reservoir back. Now, you can see that this line right here is braided it's flexible that's the rear line and the front line I don't know if you can see it actually it's probably pretty difficult to see but the front line is also braided as well this is the braided front line it actually wraps down and what that means is once I pull the the 
master cylinder off, I'll actually be able to move it and pull it back and, uh, and not have to actually bend any lines, at least to start with. So this is the actual unit that, that they call the DSC, the Dynamic Stability Control Unit. And this will activate whichever, the brakes on whichever wheel that it thinks it needs to in order to get your car under control. This is actually held down with just that one 10 millimeter bolt right there. Once I take that off, I'll be able to lift the DSC up and kind of bend it out a little bit. And I think now, as, as I'm looking at this now, I'm gonna need to remove the air snorkel at least, and I'm probably gonna remove the, uh, the intake, the, the DISA valve, the intake throttle control valve, I think they call it. So, uh, just to give myself some more room. Mind you, when, when I was doing this in the junkyard, the, uh, the engine had already been removed from that vehicle, so I didn't have to negotiate any of, the of these kinds of logistics. I just didn't have those things in the way. So now that I see this, I pretty much know what I need to remove. I think I'm probably gonna have to remove the upper and lower intake boots. So uh, yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna remove this elbow here. And hopefully it's gonna come out easy, but it might not. Oh, and it might just break. So be more careful than I was right there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go to the junkyard and get a new one of those. <laughs> Don't be like me. And by the way, this uh, vacuum hose, I've actually already replaced mine, but your vacuum hose is very likely to be just completely, it's gonna crumble on you when you start playing with it. So you should just go buy some new uh, Eighth in, one eighth inch uh, vacuum hose just to replace pretty much all of it. You should, you should basically replace all the vacuum hoses on your vehicle if you have not done so already. So that is one thing that you should do. I think I'm basically going to leave any mistakes that I make in this video. I think it's, uh, it's a, a, a good demonstration of, you know, what can go wrong, what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So right now I'm removing their two band clamps on the back of the, uh, the upper intake boot. I'm just removing one of them because all it is is a, is a uh, connector that, that joins the two. This actually remains with that boot. Now I think what's gonna come next is the intake control valve, the DISA valve. I'm gonna disconnect this connector just by pushing down on that spring clamp, pulling it off, setting it aside. There are two Torx bolts that hold it in. They're both T40s. Can we use this to get at that? One of them is up here. Now the other one I can't actually get at with my impact wrench, so I've got to do that one by hand. Now I'm basically going to very gently pry this back and forth, work it back and forth. I've actually already rebuilt this unit and it's, I've used a new silicone o-ring. That's a rebuilt unit with a, uh, actually, here we go, with uh, an aluminum flap instead of the plastic one and a, uh, a bolt going through it from, from this end so there's no little pin to fall out and fall into your intake when it does wear out. So this one's going to last basically the lifetime of the car uh, if the vacuum unit holds up, that is. so. I've actually already loosened this clamp right here, this band clamp, and there is another one for the, that's basically on the top of the uh, lower intake boot, or the, that side of the lower intake boot, and you can see that it's right there. Now, mine is 
right there at a nicely accessible angle because I've already taken this off and put it back on once before in the past, but yours probably isn't gonna be in as good of an angle, so you're just gonna have to sort of be creative. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to access it fairly easily. Not really used to working left-handed, but let's see what we can see. Okay, I think I got that nice and loose. And let's see it's coming off. Now be real careful right here. This is a, a notorious weak area on the boot and so you just want to be as careful as you can jiggle it walk it around that was the band clamp falling don't worry i'll retrieve that later and uh you can see i've got a lot more room here to work and my plan is to actually pull the master cylinder back off and get it up out of the way and also to lift up the, the DSC unit. And I know that I'm gonna have to basically bend these four brake lines just a little bit because I'm gonna get it up and off and pull it out just back here so that I have enough room to actually pull the, uh, the brake booster out. All right. Remember now that I moved this out of the way, which actually gave me enough clearance to get these lines back. One thing I did was I disconnected the, the sensors. And there we go. It's actually loose. And yeah, no oil is actually leaking out from the back of it, so I know the master cylinder is at least not leaking. Now is probably a good time to remove that one bolt I mentioned that holds the DSC in there. I'm gonna use the magnet to pick it up and get it up out of the way. So. These are the four brake lines here, and we're gonna need to bend them back slightly. Don't be too scared about it. They're made out of metal. They're not going to snap. But then again, you don't wanna do this too much. You just wanna give yourself some room here. So you'll see that this is where it screwed into down there and on the other end of the DSC which is right there you'll see that there is a just a little a little uh, bolt hanging down Let's see Are you actually seeing that right there that's a bolt hanging down what I did was I moved the DSC until that bolt was basically just hooked hooked on the uh, the outside of the uh, the frame of the body right here. And that's just holding the DSC back a little bit. The next step from here is to remove the bolts that are holding the brake booster onto the vehicle and uh, disconnecting the brake pedal from it. Okay, so first step is to remove this, uh, this plastic cover here. So looks like we just got one of those Plastic pop-on rivets, push-down rivets, whatever you want to call them, on there. I like to carefully. Let's see. Another here, and another here. One. Oh, yeah. There's a little one of those little push-in rivets from earlier. This can just be pulled down. Pull out the ODBC connector, pop out the light. Set the panel aside. 
Now, <clears throat> underneath the brake pedal, you can see this is the end of the brake booster. And there are two fasteners. They are both 13s. We're gonna remove those. There's also a little clip right here that you need to remove. Usually it's spin backwards like that. You'll need to spin it around so that you can access it and get it off. You'll need a screwdriver to do that. I'll do that first because I think I can show you. You basically need to Really difficult to do this one-handed. <laughs> Pry it up like that. Pry it up and forward. So basically, let me lower my light here so that looks a little better. <clears throat> so basically, you need it to pry up on Pry up on that inner clip in order to push it up and off, and you'll get this when you when you do it. Now, one thing I want to point out. Basically, you need to get this push rod off, but you'll notice there's a bar here that's protecting, that's preventing it from actually coming off. This is in case, you know, that clip comes off or breaks for any reason so that the, the pedal doesn't slip off the push rod. I found that when wrangling this thing out of here, it's extremely helpful. Did we get zoomed in? Yeah, we did, okay. It's actually extremely helpful to remove this clip up here that's holding the brake pedal onto, uh, the bar that it's mounted to up there. So that's the same exact type of clip for, as uh, this lower one was. Okay, pop that off. Now, basically what we're gonna do is push this out a little. Actually, we're gonna do most of this from the uh, other side, so let's go there now. I'm gonna try to get two angles on this one. <clears throat> one from this side, one from the other. We're loose on both sides. And you can see that if we, when we remove, the reason we remove the clip is so that I can move the brake pedal as far to this side as I can. That way I've got some room to pull it off the, Pull the uh, master cylinder or the brake booster rod off of the pedal using my favorite persuader here. And there we go. Got it. Looking like, <laughs> looking like I'm just gonna have to remove the cover to the electronics box. A lot of times it's just easier. Keep your fingers crossed. Hey, well, this is the booster I got from the junkyard today. And now I'm gonna pop it in. The label, by the way, goes towards the top, just like that. Well, basically like that. You can see the two studs fit in that way. The uh, grommet basically has to be on the top right side. That's all you need to remember. This is gonna be fun. You know, I think what I'm gonna do is, I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, up here, I'm gonna rem just pull this up off um, and out of the way.
almost there. It's turning out to be much more difficult to get this thing on than I thought. I'm trying to figure out why. <laughs> Before I run out of tape. Oh, there we go. Got it. Just had to twist the brake pedal a little bit. And that did the trick. Okay guys, I think I finally realized what my problem is. It seems that this uh, metal bracket is not quite aligned with the holes on the body on the other side of it. And I realized that it is actually bolted in here. It looks like there's a lot of adjustment in area. So I'm gonna loosen that bolt so that uh, I can finally get this thing through. I'm guessing that's a 13. Rather than pushing it, I'm gonna pull it through. There we go. Ah, success. There you go. I think that will definitely save you a lot of time. So I've got the uh, booster bolted in on the inside and uh, I slipped those clips back on where they were. I didn't put that uh, the cover panel on yet, just in case. So I think right now I'm gonna put things back the way they were. And uh, one thing I did wanna note, let's go that way, yeah, let that way, like that. One thing I did wanna note was this. There's about half an inch that I can, or not half an inch, but a quarter of an inch I can push the piston in before it stops. Anyway, I'm just gonna basically, oops, sorry. I'm gonna basically set things back the way they were. Connect the sensors and get the connectors back on. Yeah, a lot easier to get these nuts on if the reservoir is off, but hey, at least this way, no brake fluid has leaked anywhere, and I'll take that. Of course, if you don't have a gear wrench. Turning these nuts by hand is going to be, well, it's going to suck. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. But it is important not to over tighten them because there is an O-ring on the uh, back of the master cylinder between the cylinder and the booster. And you don't want to squeeze that O-ring too tight because that O-ring needs to form a vacuum tight seal. So the torque specification is 19 foot-pounds. <laughs> wow. Let's see how well this works. All right. I'm going to go with that. The 
nice to repositioning the grommet for the brake lines. I'm going to retighten the DSC. Remember to position these as such so that you can get to the screws. The intake boot has a little tab right here. It fits between a notch on the back of the throttle body. Um, it's basically right on the on the right side. You can feel the you can feel it with your fingers. Make sure that you're fully seated. Trust me, you don't want to get this thing all back together and find out you've got a vacuum leak. That makes for a bad day. And I broke it. Okay, so I took the uh, the clamp that was on the front and put it on the back. It's actually exactly the same clamp. I get another one of those at the junkyard tomorrow. Lesson learned: tighten these by hand, even though it takes longer. Must admit, I've never used the uh, the impact to tighten them before, and. Now I know why I should never. And now you do too. A long screwdriver. And again, I've rotated that top clamp up out of the way so I can get at the bottom clamp. Now I'm rotating the top clamp back to where I need it. Tighten that sucker down. You might think uh, now is a good time to put that heat shield back in, but actually I believe the reason you don't is because you wouldn't be able to get the DISA back in uh, very easily. It does help when you're putting this back in have a little bit of grease on it. There's still some grease. It, it actually comes with grease. The rebuild kit does. And I've still got some grease on here. So... And basically just... Twist and tilt and, and turn it little by little by little like that, and it'll slide back on eventually. Let's do this hand tight. BMW does love their Torx bolts. Well, now that we got the DISA in, I think we're going to put the uh, heat shield back on. So, the vacuum hose up out of the way. Actually, it's easier if you go this way. The two tabs on the back of the heat shield that go on the inside. Three, actually. Get it under there. And it goes in just like that. This is the vacuum check valve. It allows air to only be sucked out and no air to go back in. There's actually a little arrow on it there that says, and the word motor should be there somewhere. Yeah, right there, motor. So that way is the motor. I'll just pop that in the grommet. Time to reconnect the idle control valve. The idle, it's not idle control, it's the uh, throttle control valve, I believe. AKA the DISA. It's time to deal with that. And I've been thinking about this, and I think I'm just gonna 
Let's super glue it. I mean, now this is actually tricky. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to glue it shut. Yeah, that's interesting. Even with epoxy, that might actually be difficult to do. Okay. Just going to lightly put some around the perimeter this time. Okay. Let's leave that like that. I'm undoing this clamp. And I'm going to re replace this clamp with a zip tie because it's easier to get a zip tie on this one. Yeah. So, what do you think? You think it's strong enough? I'm going to hope that it is. I'm going to very, very carefully, I think while I'm holding it, even. Pop that on just enough to make a seal, I think. Maybe a little more. And that's it. In fact, maybe I should have even waited until I got the whole air intake back on, or the air filter box, <laughs> which incidentally is the next step. like a car again. The battery cable goes on the bottom. And We're gonna go ahead and add the fluid, the brake fluid, back into the cylinder that we took out. It's the reservoir that is. Definitely got a good amount in there. Just below max. Make sure we didn't drip anywhere. All right, now for the moment of truth. Ah, no scrunch. Oh man, that was a job. Hopefully you learned some things from my mistakes and so that way you won't repeat them. Um, we definitely got a positive result. We are not hearing a squelching and scrunching pedal anymore. So that's very encouraging. I still think that there's a little bit too much uh, pedal travel in, uh, in the system and I think that has to do with uh, that play that was in the master cylinder that I noted earlier in the video. and. Um, I think maybe the system just has to be bled. Um, I used a pressure bleeder to, to bleed it last time. And to be quite honest, when I was bleeding them, I kept getting air bubbles in the rear lines, which was very, very weird. I actually ran a, an entire liter of uh, clean fluid through the whole system and I never got air in the front lines, but I still was getting air bubbles in the back lines, which was very, very weird. You know, what? I'm going to put all that in another video and um, I'm going to wrap this up by saying uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please click like. And if you uh, want to click subscribe, that would be great as well. Uh, thank you and good night.